welcome back to geological applications so now we shall see whatever we have seen so far where do we may possibly use it it's some of the examples actually you said will take much more time and much more involved way first of all let us take extrusion it has lots of applications let us consider performance of an extruder extruder output is directly proportional to the rotational speed the power consumption is related to the rheology what it means if i am having an extruder and i operate it at 20 rpm whether i am processing polyethylene or polypropylene or nylon my output will be same volumetric flow rate but my power consumption will be different because polyethylene has different rheology polypropylene has different rheology nylon has different rheology means at a given speed their viscosities are different and therefore the rheology plays its role in predicting the performance of extruder because we must select what should be my speed for a given application and what is the pressure drop across the die because polymer melt is coming out of an extruder die what it means the resistance for the given speed will be different if i am having a film blowing die or a pipe die or i am doing the carrying die so these are the aspects which are covered by rheology let us see some of those there are some assumptions for that low mfi material will consume more power as compared to high mfi because the viscosity is different for a given speed extruder has to generate enough pressure to see that it overcomes all the resistance of the extruder die now let us look at viscoelastic effects now in an extruder you want to mix two polymers then how the viscoelasticity plays its role viscoelasticity is normally expressed in terms of a parameters or mathematical model as if elastic part is connected to the spring like behavior as you can see here spring of modulus g and viscous part is considered as the complete fluid so we consider as if it is made up of two elements one which is viscous and one which is totally elastic they are joined either in series or in parallel that is mathematical part we do not worry about compounding is again another example of extruder when you are compounding what you are doing either you are having polymer and filler or two different polymers may be blended together so how does the mixing process takes place let us see an example where we want to talk about one matrix being dispersed into another matrix let's say this is matrix b and this is matrix a matrix a is to be dispersed into matrix b let's consider first both a and b to be polymers then process will become easy for me if one of them is filler then filler has to go into the polymer matrix and again that agglomerate has to be broken down so breaking of the droplets will be useful in many ways so first let us consider the process as we can see it here here we can see that a it will get elongated 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 and eventually it will break if this is elastic what will happen you need that force to overcome the elastic force it will break once it is break broken then each one of these will go through the same process till it becomes number of droplets now we come to injection molding now injection molding is a very important operation we have seen that effect of pressure on the viscosity we have seen it increases therefore viscosity rise has to be either accepted by providing sufficient pressure or increase the temperature to the possible limit so that viscosity decreases although pressure is high and then you can get the desired flow particularly this will be important when you are having multi cavities because in multi cavities flow has to be same in all the cavities therefore pressure temperature distribution has to be absolutely properly adjusted deep coating 
Now, deep coating is a process which can be used for either making capsules or an article to be coated with some either decorating material or protecting material as in electrical applications. So what is the important part? When you dip the article, how much time it will require for material to get coated from all the sides? And when you withdraw that, how much will remain onto the material and how much it will flow down? So that depends upon the rheology of the material. Viscosity being higher or lower and surface tension. So thickness of the coating is related to the withdrawal speed as well as to the viscosity. So let us see this process here. As we can see, object to be coated is shown here. Then this is the solution bath. We dip this and withdraw this with a velocity of V and then the material will go like this and finally it will get coated like this. Calendaring is again another process. Calendaring is used mainly in PVC sheets and films. It is also used in fabric processing. It is also used in food industry. Obviously, food industry is not the subject here today, but the process is same. And therefore, what we want to know is what is the calendaring process and what is the rheological parameter that it makes. So PVC is converted into a dough-like material and that is placed between the series of cylinders and as we can see here, the material is placed here. This is the two rollers. It presses, then it goes to the next rollers, where again, between these two. So final thickness, final material comes out in the form of sheet. What we want is this thickness. So what we want to know is what should be the gap between these two for a given speed, depending upon the rheology. When the material comes out, it should not get carried away with the cylinders. The point at which it leaves the cylinders is very important. And that is what decides the thickness of the final sheet. You can see it here very well that the point at which it leaves the two surfaces is not the same as the gap between the two cylinders. Now we go to one very small application of rheology that is known as a torque rheometer. Now torque rheometer is a different kind of equipment where rheology is applied in understanding some parameters. It does not measure the direct rheogram or any rheological parameters, but it is measurement of those parameters which are connected to rheological behavior. So what is a torque rheometer? It consists of a drive motor, which is connected to the gearbox and also a coupling device, which can connect it to batch mixer or extruder with attachments. The gearbox can control the speed and the torque measurement gives you the required information for the given application. Torque can be related to power consumption, speed, temperature, and related to processing conditions. Here is the way it looks. What we are seeing is, is a drive motor, torque transducer, and this is a batch mixer. Now one can detach the batch mixer and connect it to extruder. There are many ways of connecting this. So what it does is that if it's a batch mixer, the sample can be added into this. Then this gap is closed and the sample is allowed to melt mix during this time variation of torque which is connected to the power is measured so torque is measured as a function of speed for a given speed torque is measured as a function of time so what you measure is a variation of torque with respect to time for a given speed i hope you have enjoyed this thank you very much